Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, so uh, we're going to, um, uh, you know, my name is Rick Moore. Uh, I am the CEO of Turning Point Human Capital Management. Uh, we are a fractional human resources business, business with 24 HR uh, human resources professionals. Uh, we started this business in January of 2010 in the depths of the, the last Great Recession. We don't know what this one's called yet. And, and we understand what hard times can do to companies and their employees. Um, so since we've started in 2010, we've worked with more than 900 businesses dealing with all aspects of their human resources. And since we deal with so many companies who are all asking the same questions around this topic, we decided to put this presentation together to share what we've learned and also bring on an expert panelist to answer questions um, at the end of this session. So today, obviously, we're talking about the CARES Act and the different aspects of it. And um, as a housekeeping item, we are recording this presentation. It will be posted on our website at turningpointhcm.com backslash webinars. Uh, within a few hours, it'll typically be posted. So figure on tomorrow morning if you want to watch it or share it, it'll be on our website. We'll also send all those on, in attendance a, uh, a notification when that is taken care of. Um, we will have a question and answer session at the end of this presentation. So the presentation part will last about 25 minutes. And then we will have an SBA, Small Business Administration expert, uh, to answer all of your questions. I will introduce them shortly. Um, you may use uh, the chat function on your uh, screen for the Q&A session. So we're gonna answer all the questions at the end. Um, there will also be, at the end, after this is over, a three question survey uh, that we'll ask you to fill out. It should take all of about six seconds, so it would be greatly appreciated if you did. And, um, and with that, we're going to jump in. So make sure if you have a question, use the chat function, but know that we'll get it at the end. All right, so why are we here? Right, so we're going to stay focused on one thing on this webinar, how to help business owners get the money they need with the current choices that are available through the two SBA programs. The first is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, or EIDL, IDL, I'm calling it to make it easy. The second is through the Payroll Protection Plan, PPP, which was recently passed by the House and the Senate and then signed into law by President Trump on March 27th, 2020, which was last Friday, so just about five days ago. So as you can imagine, there are many questions surrounding calculations, definitions, that are in an 880 page, $2.2 trillion bill that was passed, you know, was conceived, debated, and passed between, you know, uh, you know two branches of government uh, within days, which normally I don't think there's ever been many trillion dollar bills before. So, so there's, there are some questions that are going to require further guidance, right? And I think we're seeing uh, some information and guidance almost kind of changing on the spot. And depending on who is reading the bill and who is disseminating the information, there's enough gray areas that there could be at this point different interpretations of definitions and things like that. Uh, since some of this information in this session may be updated, we're going to do an updated webinar this Friday, April 3rd at 10 a.m. So, so it's what we learned today. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll update as necessary so that we're ready for Friday, which Friday is also the day when you can start, um, start applying for this loan. Uh, so we, as I mentioned, we have an expert panelist on this webinar to answer your questions. Um, on the line, we have uh, Jason Cole, the owner of Cole Capital Associates. They are an SBA, pro he's an SBA program specialist, and he's an expert in all areas of SBA funding and has been advising clients for many years. He's been an unbelievable, unbelievable resource through this and can help any business as he has already helped Turning Point Human Capital Management. Uh, Jason will be answering questions at the end of this presentation, as I mentioned. Additionally, I would like to recognize 
the Turning Points uh, Banking and Accounting team, as they are on this webinar as guests, but not panelists. First, Devin Kiernan. Um, Devin is the Associate Group Director and Vice President for Signature Bank in Garden City. And second is Michael Focus. He's a partner at, and CPA at JT Shulman and Co, Co in Carl Place. They have been tremendous resources, partners and friends. And over this past week or so, we've spent many hours on the call, uh, all of the panelists and, and, and those that I just recognized, kind of deciphering, interpreting and, and, and pitching in. So they've been tremendous resources. And, and thank you for everyone who's helped there's many people on the call who's helped decipher all the moving parts of this behemoth legislation that is so important to so many small businesses. So the landscape as it stands today, right? So the, the declaration of disaster on March 13th by President Trump declared the COVID-19 pandemic a national emergency. This authorized the SBA to implement the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, EIDL. The EIDL is a program to inject smaller amounts of cash into a business. Um, and then on, March, then on March 27th, President Trump signed the CARES Act, that's the bill we were just talking about, um, and, which stands for the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. It is intended to assist business owners with whatever needs they have right now. So, um, let's go ahead. so the the economic. Let's start with economic injury disaster loan or EIDL. So, what is it? The Small Business Administration's disaster loans are the primary form of federal assistance for the repair and rebuilding of non-farm private sector disaster losses. The disaster loan program is the only form of SBA uh, assistance not limited to small business, if there's any larger ones here. The economic injury disaster loan program can provide up to $2 million of financial assistance. The, you know, the actual loan amounts are based on the amount of economic injury to each business. So there's going to be you know, different things. Um, so they can provide $2 million to, of financial assistance to small businesses or private nonprofit organizations that suffer substantial economic injury as a result of the declared disaster, regardless of whether that applicant sustained physical damage, right? So physical damage is you know, typically a hurricane or tornado or something along those lines. Clearly, um, this is an invisible disaster and um, it, what it's causing to businesses. So what is the EIDL used for? An EIDL can help you meet necessary financial obligations that your business, you know, or private or nonprofit organization could have could have met had the disaster not occurred. It it provides relief from economic injury caused directly by the disaster and permits you, the business owner, to maintain a re reasonable working capital position during the period affected by the disaster. So EIDLs do not replace sales or revenue, but rather the, 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 let's call it the operating costs that you would have been able to meet should the disaster have not happened. So what are the, some of the general program requirements? To be eligible for EIDL assistance, small businesses must have sustained an economic injury and be located in the disaster declared county or, dec or contiguous county. Well, the whole country has been declared a disaster. so. Um, that, that opens up for everyone. Um, and what are the loan terms on the EIDL? The SBA can provide up to $2 million, as I said, in disaster assistance to businesses. The $2 million loan cap includes both physical disaster loans and EIDL loans, which is what we're talking about here. There are no upfront fees or early payment penalties charged by the SBA, and the repayment term will be will be determined by your ability to repay the loan. So uh, one of the things we'll talk about in the, in the question and answer session is what they've amended, i.e. a $10,000 grant to uh, everyone who completes a, successfully completes a loan and how to do that. So how to apply. 
like most programs, there's going to be a level of self-service, and then there will be those that want professional help in the, navigating this SBA process. You know, for those that are do-it-yourselfers, you know, here is the information to start your application, right? So you can apply online at sba.gov. Um, you know, you can go through that, the, the SBA's Secure Disaster Loan Assistance website, uh, which is sba.gov. If you'd like to call them, right, certainly uh, you can call them on the telephone. Um, I've tried this. Um, they're overwhelmed at best. Um, and, um, you, know, you know, there are instances, depending on the operator that you get, may not be as helpful as you like, or you can email them. But it's probably not a tremendous stretch to say that it'll be difficult to get through and to navigate this maze. You know, the forms that are needed to start the application process um, can be downloaded from sba.gov um, if you need them to do some work getting ready for that application, schedule of liabilities, um, disaster loan supporting information, personal financial statement, uh, USBA disaster loan application, form 4056T. So the, the question becomes, should I get help or should I do this myself, right? I think this is a big question. There are SBA consultants and direct lenders who've been doing this for years, like the folks that I mentioned earlier. It's up to you to decide if you want to take advantage of that expertise to expedite the application process. You know, additionally, they know the ins and outs of the application process. That expertise could be the difference between a quickly approved loan and one that goes to the bottom of the pile. So that's, that was the EIDL. Now we're gonna talk about the CARES Act. So that's the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act. So these are the Paycheck Protection Program or PPP loans that we probably have all said or have never thought about PPP loans, not that they existed in the past, but now we talk about them as a matter of course throughout our day, much like social distancing. So PPP loans, this program would provide cash flow assistance through, one, uh, through a 100% federally guaranteed loan to employers who maintain their payroll during this emergency. If employers maintain their payroll, the loans would be forgiven, which would help workers remain employed, as well as help the affected small businesses and our economy snap back quicker after the crisis. You know, I think part of uh, thinking about this logically, the snapback after this crisis is over and are we as businesses ready to respond is, is critical as we go through this process. The PPP has a host of attractive features such as forgiveness of up to eight weeks of payroll based on employee retention and salary levels, no SBA fees, and at least six months of deferral with uh, with a maximum deferral up to a year. So you can defer some of payments back at the end and those up to, the, up to, the, up to a year. Small businesses and other eligible ent entities will be able to apply if they were harmed by COVID-19 coronavirus between February 15th of this year and June 30th of this year. So there are probably very few businesses that were not affected. So we can assume we all have been. This program would be retroactive to February 15th in order to help bring back workers who may have already been laid off to bring them back onto payroll. And the loans are available through June 30th of this year. So what types of businesses are eligible, right? Businesses, businesses and entities, they must have been in operation on February 15th of 2020. So these are small business concerns as well as any business, 501c3, nonprofit, 501c19, veterans organization, tribal businesses, um, anyone that has between uh, under 500 employees. Um, this is interesting. I think this is an important thing to understand. Any um, individuals who operate a sole uh, proprietorship or act as an independent contractor and eligible self-employed individuals. So this is a uh, you know, kind of an expansion of typically what we would have come to expect in these kinds of um, uh, situations. So how has, how, how is the size, 
how is the size of the loan determined? Right? So this is a big question. This kind of starts to fall into one of those gray areas when there's 880 pages with all definitions. There, there's still some, some holes to be determined. So you may hear different guidance from different people. Um, I think we'll still continue to get more focused guidance over the time, over time. But um, so depending on your business's situation, the loan size will be calculated in different ways. Okay? The maximum loan size is always $10 million. And your loan is equal to 250% of your average monthly payroll costs during, uh, from March 1st of 2019 forward. Right. So there are a couple, there's a couple different interpretations of that, but that's kind of uh, the best uh, and most common uh, example that we're getting. Um, we, so as I said, we're hearing, we're hearing some competing guidance on this calculation. We're also hearing this could be from the period of 3119 through uh, 31220. So we'll keep you posted on those developments. So this is kind of where, where we are. So the loan, max 50, if you were not in business. So it's, this is how we're going to determine it. Um, and this is really where the bulk of the questions are coming in right here on how to determine the bulk uh, size of your loan and how to calculate it and what paperwork you should be collecting from accountants, banks, et cetera, getting ready for um, this Friday when those loans can be um, uh, submitted for. So what costs are eligible or not el and not eligible for payroll? I'm sorry, this is a little funky down here. So costs that are eligible for payroll, compensation, which is, includes things like salary, wage, commissions, or similar compensation. Similar compensation is kind of the, uh, where, where, where a lot of questions are coming around. So whether it's 1099s or you know, business owners who take a guaranteed payment or uh, distribution or some sort, th those sorts of things. Um, payments of, of cash tips or any sort of equivalent. Um, payments for vacation um, or uh, parental, family, medical, or sick leave, allowance for dismissal, dismissal or separation, um, payments required for the group health care benefits, um, and any payment of any retirement benefits. So not necessarily the employee's contribution, but what the business is, con is contributing to an, an employer uh, and a, a, a retirement benefit, 401k, that sort of thing. Payment of state or local taxes assessed on the compensation of those uh, plans. And, it, and what's not eligible is compensation for either an employee or the owner over 100000 So if you are an employee or owner that makes 110000 for the calculation of this 250% of your payroll, your max amount is 100,000 that could be applied to that. So no one's not going to be eligible if they make more than 100,000. It's just 100,000 is the max that can go into that uh, compensation. So, um, so, any, so, uh, so that, those are, the, that's, those are the, the amounts that can go into your calculation. And these are the amounts that are not allowed to go into your calculation. So what are allowable uses of the loan or the proceeds of the loan, right? So the payroll cost as noted on the previous slide, um, costs related to the continuation, again, this is what you can use it for, costs related to the continuation of group healthcare benefits during the periods of, of paid sick, medical family leave and, ins and any insurance premiums. Employees, salaries, commissions, or here we see that term again, similar compensations. Payments of any interest on any mortgage obligation. It shall not include the principal of the mortgage obligation, but the interest on that mortgage obligation. Any rent, including rent under a lease agreement. Utilities. And interest on any other debt obligations that were incurred before the covered period, right? So I would imagine that your minds are kind of spinning when you see these things and you say, oh, I have that and I have that. What about this and what about that? Um, you can start to see where there will be many questions um, on how to use these proceeds and how to account for that 250% loan of your average monthly uh, covered payroll. 
name. Now, at the end of this, there is an opportunity to get this loan forgiven, right? So that there's no, no taxable event or no repayment of that following those rules. So forgiveness on a covered loan is equal to the sum of the following payroll costs incurred during the covered eight week period compared to the previous year or time period, proportionate to maintaining employees and, and wages, excluding those over 100,000, right? So we're never, we're never using any uh, compensation over 100,000. Payroll costs plus any payment of interest on any covered mortgage obligation, right? Not including any prepayment or payment of principal on a covered mortgage obligation, right? So, you know, they're not gonna pay your mortgage, but the interest payment, plus any payment on any covered rent obligation, plus any covered utility payment. So how do I get forgiveness for my loan? So you must apply through your lender for forgiveness on your loan. So this is, you know, in eight to 10 weeks from now, um, assuming you get funded right away. In, in this application for forgiveness, it must include documentation verifying the number of employees on payroll and pay rates, including IRS payroll tax filings, state income, payroll, and unemployment insurance filings. Um, documentation verifying payments on covered mortgage obligations, lease, rent obligations, and utilities, and certification from a representative of your business organization that is authorized to certify that documentation is provided as true, and that the amount that is being forgiven was used in accordance with the program's guidelines, right? So um, again, I think that there'll be further um, guidance on this as we go along. Um, and, and, uh, and certainly we could talk about that in the question and answer sessions. So where should I go to get a PPP loan, right? And this goes back to an earlier slide. Um, you know, where should you go? So all current SBA 7A lenders are eligible PPP loan lenders. And the Department of Treasury will also be in charge of authorizing new lenders, including non-bank lenders, to help meet the needs of small business owners. Obviously, there's going to be a rush on this. So the, the, the thought process here is start to think about who your team is going to be. Right. So on Friday, when you can start uh, applying for this loan, you can already apply for the EIDL on SBA.gov. But applying for this loan, you know, two people, you know, it's the old joke, two people walk into a bank. Right. So think about it. If you're the person that walks into the bank and has a great banking relationship, i.e. you have some sort of banking manager or you have an SBA seven lender that you've used in the past, that is a great first start. For those that are going to be kind of walking into their bank and they're not really known by their bank, you know, you're, you're probably going to be a little bit on your own at this point. No one knows for sure. So it may make sense to have a, uh, a banking relationship or an SBA 7 loan expert like one we have on the call today to help guide you through this and to help um, you know, understand what, what they may be looking for, what different language says, so that your application goes to the top of the pile as best as possible. So thank you for sharing. We're gonna to get to our question and answer session and I see we already have a handful of questions. Um, here is our contact information. Um, so uh, please feel free to reach out to us with any questions. We'll make sure we get you into uh, connected with our experts. As I mentioned, we will also be repeating this webinar on April 3rd at 10 a.m. with any updates that we learn between now and Friday. So Friday is the day when the applications are supposed to be open for the PPP. So we imagine between now and Friday is going to be the difference, feel like the difference between, you know, tomorrow and 10 years ago. There's going to be a lot of movement. There's going to be a lot of questions. There's going to be things popping up. So, uh, so then finally, at the end of this session, after the Q&A is done, we will be um, uh, giving, you'll get automatically get asked a, a survey. It's three questions long. It's four seconds. It's helpful to us to know 
how to tailor and what to look for and be prepared for when we do this again on Friday with whatever updated information. So I thank you very much. So with that said, let me, uh, let me make sure that I have my, our, um, uh, our panelist on, on mute. And Jason, can you hear me? I can, Rick, thanks. Okay, thank you. So I will read the questions out, Jason. It looks like we have a handful. Oh, let me share, sorry, hit the wrong button. Um, hang on, sorry, folks. That was the wrong button hit. Okay, there we are. Okay, so it looks like we have a handful of questions. Let me see what we have, and I will read them out loud and then ask Jason to, to jump in. Okay, so Reva has a question. If we have, or, and, and Jason, I'd say, let's try to take maybe two minutes because it looks like we have a lot to get through. So sure. let's make sure we can get through as many as possible. And if we have to, uh, folks can contact us so that we can set up a call with you and them directly after this, okay? Um, so Reva asks, if we've already furloughed employees so they could collect unemployment, at what point do we rehire them and start paying them? Right. Uh, everyone has the same question, especially in the restaurant restaurant business. Uh, when do we reopen? When do we rehire our, uh, our employees? Um, the timing of that is supposed to coincide with the, with the, um, with the receipt of the, of the PPP loan. Right. Or and, um, you know, that that's really what uh, is expected. And then the, you're supposed to hire back the same amount of people and do the same business. And um, that will help qualify you for the for the forgiveness piece of the of that loan. So you should really wait till, um, you know, you get the money or any financing and um, and hire those hire those folks back. Okay, great. Thank you. So let's let's answer a, a yes or no question here. Kevin asks, just to confirm, an S Corp can qualify? Yes, it can. Okay, great. Um, we have a comment from Laura, so I'm going to read it because I like it. Uh, Laura says, your speaker is very engaging. Love listening to this. He makes everything easy to understand. Thank you, Laura. That's due to the help of the experts that are on our panel and who've helped out, so I appreciate that. Uh, Ruth Ann asks, are workers' comp premiums part of payroll costs? I believe they are, because that's part of uh, having employees. Okay, great. That's that's a great question, and here we go. So uh, this is from Anthony. Uh, is the 10K advance from the EIDL a grant and forgiven, or only if a loan is not approved? Right. The um, That is an interesting question. To the best of my knowledge, at this moment in time, the 10,000 advance will be um, a grant and a forgiven forgiven event. So, if the um, if you do the SBA application for the EIDL electronically, uh, you are in line to get that 10,000 advance in supposedly a couple of days. So, um, and I believe that is a forgiven uh, forgiven loan or grant or whatever you want to call it. Um, if you don't get approved later, then I, I do not think, I do not think, I don't know 100%, I don't think they'll claw that back. Uh, Again, that, think, that's, think, that's my think, understanding as well, that that 10,000 is for a successful application and you get a loan number um, or account number and that is the, that is when that comes in supposedly in three days, that's your money, regardless of anything that happens after that. Okay, next question. Is the EIDL loan forgiven also, and can you apply for both? Uh, like we said, you can, well, you can apply for both. That is, that is allowed, and you should. You should apply for both. Um, is the EIDL loan forgiven? As we said above, 10,000 of it um, will be. Um, yes, yeah, so you should definitely apply for both at this time. Okay. Okay. There was another question above, I think, from Anthony. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure that we get uh, we get through all of these. So all right. uh, I sent a question yesterday about the SBA advancement application that asks for one's bank account information. Is this legit? 100% legit. They want to give you the 10,000 right away. So electronically is the best uh, method. Great, perfect. Uh, Mike asks, I'm a sub S. In addition to salary, which I understand is covered, the company also pays me a dividend and makes me an annual 401k contribution would either be covered. 
uh, I believe the um, payment of retirement benefits is covered. Yeah. It's part of the definition of what uh, payroll is. Yep. And I've, I've gotten some guidance from folks that says uh, when you're a business owner and whether you call it a draw, a draw, a guaranteed payment or a dividend, that is quote unquote um, uh, similar compensation, right? That's that term that comes back. So I think that's right. That, right. So the next question, does a does it draw count? That's what we just answered. Um, okay. All right, so I so someone asked, I've sent my employee home and I'm paying her. Can I use part of the loan to reimburse myself for that time I already paid to keep them off of unemployment? Um, I didn't quite get that. Yeah, so I think the question is driving at, so someone has not made a move yet, probably could have put someone on unemployment, but decided not to and continue to pay them. So right. can they use part of that loan to reimburse themselves for that time they've already paid to keep that person off of unemployment? Right. Well, the um, the 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 EIDL alone can be used for that purpose. That's working capital, supporting employees and salary, or the other um, PPP loan can do the same. The only the big the big benefit of the PPP loan is the eight weeks calculation where you can get that forgiven. So um, your eight week period can begin anytime after you get the loan, right? Right as soon as you get the loan, it counts eight weeks and you you um, you do the calculation and you submit for the forgiveness. Yep. Um, so the fact that you kept, the fact that you kept people on um, during this, um, during this, during this situation, um, well, hopefully you're still in business. Um, hopefully they are doing business, but I don't, you know, it's all, it's all just working capital. So basically your question drives that is the e the EIDL money can compensate you for that. Yes. Okay. So the next is, um, and we can make this a quick one because it's listed on websites. How are banks and agents compensated? Is the money paid from proceeds of the loan or paid back by the borrower later? Right. There was no fees. There was no fees built into the borrower in any of this. Um, the P, the PPP loan, the lender the lender servicing fees, any any compensation to the lender is paid to the um, paid to, paid by the paid by the government, so it has nothing to do with the borrower paying. Okay, got it. So um, the next question, uh, did you say I can answer this? Did you say 1099s can be included in the calculations? And that answer is yes. We have a lot of questions, so I'm just trying to get through as many as possible. We can stay on till you know the end of the hour, so if, uh, so we're going to try to get through as many questions as we possibly can. Um, the next question: Do the eight weeks need to be completed by June 30th? That's a it's a good question. I don't know if it has to be started or completed by that date, but I will find out. That that's a good question. So. So my interpretation, just to kind of banter about this, is you can apply for this loan on June 30th. So just my logic, and I think it makes sense for, for, um, for Jason to confirm this, my logic says that if I can apply on June 29th, then the day that my loan is funded, that's when my eight weeks begin. I agree. Okay, good. So, so we'll, but we'll get more clarification on that, but I think that's, that's probably how, how it works. Um, do you have to keep employees on payroll under the EIDL loan? Uh, no, there's no, you don't have to meet the same standards of the, of carrying the same payroll that you did prior to the disaster using the EIDL. There's no, there's no mechanism for that EIDL. EIDL is to support you for working capital for, you know, three, four months, let's say, um, of all your fixed costs to get back on your feet. Okay. All right, so um, we got some more questions here. So um, let me just see if I can get through this. How distinct? To, how did I? Uh, how did distinct to use the proceeds of the EIDL versus PPP loan need to be? How distinct do the use of proceeds between the EIDL and the PPP loans need to be? For example, can a PPP be used for payroll, rent, and other covered purposes for the designated wait period, and the EIDL be used for overhead expenses outside of the eight-week period? Uh, yes, uh, the, 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 the eight week period has to be documented with, 
with the payroll information and all the evidence of payment of either rent or utilities and such things uh, during that covered period. Outside of that covered period, you know, use of EDI, e, uh, EIDL funds can um, be for the same things as long as that is, you know, also you can, as long as you can document that during that period, exactly. Okay, great. So uh, if they're thinking of applying, if they're thinking of applying for both the EIDL and PPP, does it make sense to do one before the other? You should be doing the EIDL today. And um, PPP, um, anytime, anytime, if anytime once it's opened, you can prepare for the PPP. Um, and you should be doing, you should be doing them both right now. Um, but the EIDL is open and ready. And once you submit your EIDL application, you, you, you will be uh, getting that $10,000 advance. Um, okay, so what happens if my employees are already employed, already applied for unemployment? That's that's it's all it's all built into the mix there. That's 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 a support system that's been put in place in the interim when until we're allowed to leave our houses and get back to uh, get back to business in earnest and okay. go out and 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 mingle. Um, the employees on employees on unemployment is the bridge to get us get us through to the point where you can get your employees back working in a business that's actually you know viable and working okay we kind of talked about this earlier but just to reiterate how much should we budget for a 7a loan professional how much do they charge well um that's a trick question everyone everyone has the right to charge um you know put in the time and when two parties agree to that's what they get get paid okay. but um, there is a limit to what you're allowed to um, be charged on the EIDL, that's for sure. Uh, that number is $2,500. So no one is allowed to charge you more than that to help you with the EIDL program, the, the Economic Disaster Program from the SBA directly. And um, on the other side of the coin, the PPP, the, um, the one, one of the rules is if the lender is willing to pay um, the referral referral agent, the person helping you do this, then they cannot collect a fee from both sides of that um, both sides of that transaction. Okay, so that should be that's so just to, just for purposes of speed, that's kind yeah. of a that's you know that's the decision that each person would make, and each there's going to be other people out there. So I'm a business owner. I'll answer this one and make mm -hmm. over a hundred thousand. Does the payroll max me out at a hundred k? Or am I just not included in the calculation? No, you're up to a hundred thousand is included in the calculation. So, if you make two hundred k, a hundred k would go towards the towards the calculation. Um, all right. So this one, um, you know, this one's a little complicated. So let's try to answer it quickly. Again, just for speed of time. What if we have a performance issue on our current team and are close to needing to terminate employment? How would this impact eligibility for loan forgiveness? Or is it safer to keep the employee on, put on a performance improvement plan, get through the two month period, eight weeks, then decide to keep or terminate? Wow, you want me to answer that one? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, so I, I'll just do it for speed. And, Ro and Rodney asked this question. So certainly this has a lot of moving parts. Um, and might require some specific, but um, yeah. So, so if you just go by what the way the law is written is, what you put into the calculation to cover those people, that's what they're looking at the end for um, for, um, for for loan forgiveness and application for loan forgiveness. So let's assume for the short period of time that those two things are tied together. Okay. Another question: Did you say 1099s can be included? The answer is yes. uh what okay what docs are needed for a care loan okay so the guidance isn't completely out because the 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 banks are starting to get there and the sa 7a lenders are starting to get it but you should be prepared for kind of you know some payroll docs from 2019 uh any 1099 docs um you know uh, you, you know kind of the typical business reports you should have those ready to go. 
um, you should try to, uh, and again, if this is, this is something that we help, you know, we can get you help on with our experts is how to come up with a model so that you can start to calculate what this thing is worth and how all the moving pieces go into it and what, what, what that should look like. So, but think of your basic business documents uh, that cover 2019 would be a really good start. Uh, what about premature IRA withdrawal? What so about? I think I think we said we'd focus for the purposes of this call purely on the loan, the EIDL and the PPP. However, I do believe, uh, don't quote me on this, I do believe that there are um, provisions in there that if uh, that waive some of the taxes and penalties and fees on on IRA withdrawals and those investment accounts, but that might be for a different call. Um, are owners distributions considered payroll? That comes under that um, that blanket category of similar con uh, compensation. Yep, and I think this next question falls under the same category. Does a K one does K one income count towards PPP for sub S if still below a hundred? I think that's the same thing. It's that or similar compensation is kind of the uh, collection point for all of all of business owners who don't traditionally take a um, a you know a traditional you know paycheck. Yes, quite possible. Uh, yeah. All right. I have a client that defaulted on a previous SBA loan and saw in the payroll application that if you answered yes to defaulting, they can go elsewhere to get the payroll relief loan. Uh, quickly on, on defaults on previous SBA loans, if you would, if you have a sense of that. Uh, as, far as, I, as far as I know, the um, 7A rules are very clear. If you, if you defaulted on any other government, federal government debt, Federal, federal government guaranteed debt, that would be an FHA house, that would be a student loan, that would be um, an SBA, a traditional SBA 7A loan for business, then you're, you're not eligible to uh, participate in, in the EIDL. Um, and I kind of assume that you can't, you can't do the paycheck protection. However, the questioning that's asked on the new paycheck protection application, uh, may not uh, entirely cover all those uh, all those situations so do i really know at this point um it's an interesting question but I, all i know is this, the 7a rules specifically um in the core of the 7a uh, rule book says um any 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 federal government loan defaults is a no-no okay so next question let's just you know just because we have so many questions we have to get through so Folks, I'm going to, you know, say, look, we're going to surface answer each question just so we can try to touch as many people's questions as possible. So under the PPP loan, does it require employees to be actively at work? So industries like restaurants and social, with social distancing in place, folks can't dine in. It seems the loan could be used to pay employees and keep them on health care, which helps the economy. There's a little break in the audio here. I didn't hear okay. the whole thing. Can you, can you hear me? I so, can hear you. All right. Under the PPP loan, yes. does it require employees to be actively at work? So industries like restaurants with social distancing in place, folks can't dine in. It seems the loan can be used to pay employees and keep them on health care, which helps the economy. Um, that is, um, I think that's accurate to some degree. Um, it, ideally, you'd want to have, uh, you know, social distancing come to an end, get the loan, and then have people dine in and have a good time. But if you think, if you think that specific situation through, um, and you're keeping up, keeping up a full payroll for a restaurant that nobody's coming to, it's a little, uh, a little, uh, a little strange. Yep. But um, the fact about the health care coverage, yeah, that's, that's part of it. And keeping the economy going, that's part of it, too. Um, just getting money put back into the economy. That's the goal of this whole, uh, whole uh, prospect. No. All right, great. So, all right, this, so, so just so there's going to be, there's a handful of questions on uh, S Corp or I'm a single, you know, member LLC or, or any of those, or, you know, my owner, I don't get a traditional paycheck. So I'm going to kind of lump those all together and say, you can apply for both the EIDL and you can also apply for the PPP uh, if you're, you know, getting that 1099 or, you know, that sort of stuff. So just to kind of blanket that, because we have a lot of questions to get through. 
Um, so for the PPP, do we submit payroll documentation for the loan application? The answer is we haven't seen the final guidance, but the, 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 the best guess is they're going to look at, you know, your two, two, 2019 payroll, you know, NYS 941s and all those sorts of things. Any of your 2019 um, uh, uh, 1099s, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the EID loan formula, uh, that you apply, uh, I'll answer this just to move forward a little bit, uh, Jason. When yep. you apply for the EIDL, you put your, uh, your top line revenue in that they ask a question about, and then you put your cost of goods in. And as best of my knowledge, yes or no, Jason, they come up with the formula and what the amount is for your business. Yes, one of the, one of the main one of the main, main objectives of the disaster loan in general for any disaster is to provide those you know three four months maybe in this case more of that working capital and uh, expense coverage that people need to get through it. Okay, great. This is a great question. So, does the government look at personal financial wealth even if the business is is very hurt from the disaster? So personal wealth, personal guarantee, those sorts of things. Right, so for this, for this purpose, the, in both the EIDL and the, um, the PPP, normal SBA rules are thrown away. So one of the rules is personal guarantee, gone. There's no personal guarantees of any shareholders on these, these loans. Number two, there is something they call, you know, credit elsewhere test as part of the 7A rules, which means is there personal wealth somewhere that can be used before the government steps in to help. That rule is thrown away in this, in both of these loans as well. So the idea being you're qualified, everyone's qualified because there is uh, this economic distress that we're undergoing is causing, uh, causing the, um, the need. So that's the, that's the qualification, Great. Not, uh, uh, not the personal guarantee. There's a small home daycare, or let's call it any business, that is now without income qualified. So um, I'll just, again, just for speed, uh, they're going to look at your 2019 information because they know that you've now been hurt by this disaster. So when they asked, they asked for, um, uh, on the EIDL, they asked for, I think it was March to March, top line revenue and, and, um, and um, cost of goods uh, in their calculation. Right. Um, so do you know if venture-backed companies start up qualify for PPP and or EIDL? Well, um, venture back. So I, I, I think just. They mean like a, person. like a, like a shareholder and, and, uh, and, uh, and well, an think investor. It, I, think, I think they're asking if the, if there's a, an investor, um, and the invest, I think whoever the owner is, right. If it's an investor or the, you know, whoever that is, um, uh, and their business is less than 500 employees, they'd be eligible to, um, to, 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 um, to apply. It will ask Correct. who the shareholders are of the business on the EIDL application. Um, so that's the assumption that if that business is paying people and has suffered a disaster that uh, under reasonable circumstances, they would be eligible to apply uh, and potentially get these funds. That's correct. Okay. All right, good. So we asked that. So we have a few more here. Let's go. We have nine more. Okay, I'm just looking because it seems like we're start, we've answered some of these questions. Uh, okay, this is a good one. After the eight weeks of loan distributions to the employees, if things are still bad, can the employee go back on unemployment or be furloughed if need be? Yeah, I saw. I, I was reading that one that popped up. Um, I haven't thought about that. Um, I don't know precisely. Um, I don't know. Um, I could. I'm going to look into that. Because that ties into the the whole the whole bill and the way it's written. I don't know about the unemployment side how it ties into this. I don't know if that's prohibited. Um, I'm not. I don't know. I'm going to look into that one. Right. Um, okay. So let's. I'm just trying to see what we've kind of covered. Uh, is the EIDL application a lengthy application? Um, I'll answer this one personally. It takes ten minutes or less, and if you think about it. Uh, if you automatically complete it and you get $10,000 if you do nothing else, that means you made $60,000 an hour for that uh, 10 minutes. So that's uh, pretty interesting. Um, after the loan, 
interesting. Okay, we talked about that. If the business, oh, it, this is a really good question. Um, if the business waits until June to apply for PPP, do they run the risk that the funds will be used up in June? I'm seeing attorney's advertisement that you need to apply early while the funds are available. Yeah, some people are saying that. I, you know, there's no way to know. I, you know, the, the demand for this is quite high, and um, they've got, they're already preparing, you know, additional rounds of this just in case. So um, I don't, you know, you, you can't tell the future. So right, you want to you want to act as fast as you can to help your business thrive in the future. Okay. Um, what if an employee left voluntarily after two fifteen, twenty, you know, twenty? So after March, uh, February 15, 20, and the position is not going to be refilled. Do we have to hire someone to fill that slot in order to get forgiveness or do wow. they just not add it into their calculation? Uh, well, that's an interesting uh, scenario. Uh, there's, this, there's, 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 there is leeway in the forgiveness calculation in terms of, you know, I, you know there's, it's, it's a little complex, but there's, there's some leeway for different scenarios that that can probably fall into. Um, I say probably, depending on on the situation. That's really a it's really a one off one off situation we can we can figure out. I don't know the exact answer. Okay, and that's that's kind of why we're doing this again. I think there's going to be, yeah. uh, you know, in, as I said earlier, in this in this 880 page 2.2 trillion dollar document, um, there there's 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 quite a few gray areas or things or situations that have not completely been vetted. Um, so the next question is, I can answer this. Sorry, I got in late. Will the recording be available? Yes, the recording will be available on our website uh, by tomorrow. Uh, where you signed up for this is where it will be posted. And we will also send an email to all participants that uh, it has been posted. Um, I heard we're, we are allowed to pay employees 75% of their salary and still get loan forgiveness. Is that true? Um not exactly true. I think what that refers to is there's a comment somewhere in the in the law that talks about the, the expectation or the maybe the application said it somewhere. It says um, it's anticipated that 75 percent of 75 um, percent of the forgiveness is will, will should be should be for payroll. So there's something mentioned about that, but it has nothing it has nothing to do with that. You have to you have to reach the threshold is higher than 75 percent of your payroll. To 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 be to, to to meet the qualification for forgiveness. Okay. What if your business just opened in January 2020 and was affected by this disaster? It's a, it's, a, it's an interesting question that comes up. I think it's okay because the rule says you could you look at your you look at they're, they're going to cover payroll that was in the last year. So I'm not sure how to precisely handle that scenario. But if somebody somebody has a business, they're paying employees for two months and then this happens, then uh, it's certainly, certainly a scenario to, to bring forward. Got to examine a little further. And, um, but keep in mind, the SBA is really all about the, the story. You know, everyone has a unique situation. So the, the, the law can't accommodate every scenario. And like Rick said, it's still in development. And um, it's, it's still, as we speak, the SBA is still giving guidance. So yeah. We're all we're all figuring it out as we go. And I think that goes back to the earlier comments within the presentation part is who is going to guide you through this is maybe the difference between success and failure, right? So you need to um, kind of figure that for your own business. Uh, but I would also think that part of this uh, in that question would be the EIDL, uh, you know, there might be top line revenue for those couple of months and, and costs. So um, I certainly apply for the I. A, I, yeah, EIDL. Yeah. Right. So, so that's, that exactly should happen. So, yeah. Okay. So if I am a W2 employee of a company, but I also receive a 1099 to my DBA, am I entitled to the EIDL? So um, the, question, the question is the 1099 employee is going for the EIDL. Yes. Right. Well, if the 1099 employee is getting paid to a company that is its own independent thing and they they do work as you know as work for for you know as that as a business bona fide business somewhere else paying rent maybe doing work for other people that that argument could be made 
Okay. But if it's if it's solely paying ten ninety nine to an individual just because they that's the mechanism of that particular office uh, or business, then I would say no. Okay. So um, another question: Can an EIDL applicant be a business which has a twenty has a non resident twenty uh, percent owner? So twenty percent ownership is a non resident. Can they apply? Right. So if controlling ownership is a is a is a is a U.S. citizen. I think that's I think that would work fine. All right. If you're not operational, you're supposed to be paying employees their full salary. Okay. We kind of talked about that. I'm just trying to trying to get this in in the next couple of minutes. So mm -hmm. where did you read that the ten thousand EIDL is a grant? You asking me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a question that Mitchell is asking. So got it, got I it. have I have my opinion. So I can, yes. Right. There is um, there is there is language within uh, somewhere within the, um, the application within the um, within um, sorry the PPP that talks about the grant um, the grant the grant aspect of the EIDL. So there's some cross referencing of that of that. Additionally, when you go on the SBA.gov for the disaster relief application, um, as you go through that, it's about a six page application takes less than 10 minutes, as I mentioned, there's a checkbox on the last page that says, would you like a $10,000 immediate grant, right? And mm -hmm. you check that box and it asks you to put in right. your bank account number. And that money is, it'll say on that as soon as you hit send, uh, that this money will be in your, this is a grant that will be in your bank account in three days. So um, that's kind of that's kind of where that is when you go through the application. Yep. Um, is cannabis company eligible, grow site? Uh, that I, don't, I have no idea. Um, cannabis hemp, if it's, if it's industrial hemp, that's a federally, uh, federally legal thing. So if it's industrial hemp, I'd say that would be, um, that would be something that would be fine. If it's a cannabis, that's federally, not federally legal at this point. So that is not eligible. Got it. All right. Uh, we just got another question. So we were through them, but so we're still here. So no problem. If you have more questions, just throw them up. Can you apply for EIDL and not use the loan? Of course. Okay. Um, you could take it and um, have it have it on reserve and then just give it back when uh, business starts to thrive again. Right. No prepayment penalty. Okay. Uh, what happens if you are a permanent resident and not a citizen and you own the company 100%? Can you still apply for EIDL? So you're a permanent resident, yes. but you're not a U.S. citizen can, and you own the company 100%. Can you apply for the EIDL? Right. There's, there's, there's a huge provision in, in all the SBA 7A rules that talks about citizenship and every, 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 every nuance of um, what the status would be. Um, permanent residents, if you have meet certain criteria are eligible for 7A. So I believe I'd have to, I'd have to dig into the rule book of the disaster loan program, but I believe there's, there is provision for um, all, all varieties of, of status to be eligible. You're, if you're a business owner, paying taxes, bona fide U.S. company, I think that's uh, accounted for. So and, and, could, I, and I want to we say, could find out. We could find out. Yeah, and I want to say when I did the SBA when I was on the site, it like any question: Are you a a U.S. citizen or a permanent resident? Like it, it asked that kind of a question. Right. So I would think that the answer is yes, because I just to use logic. The goal is to have the employees of this company that's owned by a permanent resident but not a citizen to keep them working because they're no different than any other employees. True. So, all right. Uh, so someone just wrote, doing the disaster loan right now, does the owner count as an employee in these forms? Thanks for all the info. Yeah, if it's a sole person, I would just put one in the employee box. Number right. employee so, box. But if you're an employee in the traditional sense, whether it's a traditional W-2 or other, um, what was the term that they use, uh, or similar compensation, that would uh, that to me says the employer should go in as in the employee count. Right. Okay. Let's see here. So I think we're through all the questions. 
Um, we're right on the hour, so that's great. So I want to thank everyone for coming here. You will receive a three-question survey. We please ask you to fill it out. Um, it'll take you 10 seconds. Um, and we're going to be back uh, on Friday. So you can go to the website again to, to register as you did here. So anything that's updated between now and Friday morning, uh, we're going to try to have uh, additional guidance. And, uh, and on Friday is the day that everyone's supposed to be able to, um, to, uh, to apply through their bank for the PPP. Uh, good advice, use the EIDL in the meantime. Um, but more importantly, think about who is going to, um, who is going to um, guide you through this process, right? Who's, who is the expert that's going to help you? So uh, if, if we can help, please reach out. We'll make sure you get in touch with our experts. Um, otherwise, we thank all of you. Have a great day. Everyone stay safe and um, hope to talk to you all soon. Have a great day. Thanks, Jason. Hey, thank you for having me. I appreciate being of help. All right, Jason. Have a great day. Jason of, of Cole Capital Associates. Thanks so much. All right. Bye-bye. Have a nice night.